Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're going to be working on an interesting calculus question about the area using beta functions, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The question is for all positive value of n. Determine the area by absolute value of x to the power of n plus absolute value of y to the power of n that is less than or equal to 1. So basically, this expression, absolute value of x to the power of n plus absolute value of y to the power of n is less than or equal to 1. This basically looks roughly like this. Negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1. Okay, so that's why we can get the area. Area has to be then equal to 4 times integral from 0 to 1, parenthesis 1 minus x to the power of n to the power of 1 over n. Then we have dx. So using this, we can make a little conversion, right? So I'll be calling this x to the power of n as z. Okay, which means so x is equal to z to the power of 1 over n. That means your dx. dx has to be equal to 1 over n times z to the power of 1 over n minus 1. And we have dz. So that's why using this, we can rewrite your integral. So the area is now 4 times integral from 0 to 1. And then we have 1 minus z to the power of 1 over n. And then your dx is equal to 1 over n times z to the power of 1 over n minus 1 dz. So we can just write it out. 1 over n times z to the power of 1 over n minus 1 and dz. Okay, let's pull this 1 over n outside. So the area is finally 4 over n. That times integral from 0 to 1, 1 minus z to the power of 1 over n times z to the power of 1 over n minus 1, and dz. Okay, then now we can introduce this beta function. So beta function b of a and b. This is now integral from 0 to 1, and say t to the power of a minus 1 times 1 minus t to the power of b minus 1, and dt. Okay, this one can be represented as the gamma functions. This is the same thing as, okay, gamma of A times gamma of B over gamma of A plus B. Okay, using this, we can represent the area using gamma functions, right? So your area is then 4 over N. Okay, that times gamma of 1 over n plus 1 times gamma of 1 over n. Get that divided by gamma of 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n. Okay, so that's why the answer for the area has to be then 4 over n. That times gamma of 1 over n plus 1 times gamma of 1 over n. That divided by Gamma of 2 over n plus 1. This has to be your expression. Okay, if you want to rewrite this for a little bit more, then we can represent this as now the 4 times, okay, 4 times 1 over n times gamma of 1 over n times gamma of 1 over n plus 1. That divided by Gamma of 2 over n plus 1. Okay, so that's why this has to be the same thing as then your 4 times now gamma of 1 over n plus 1 times another gamma of 1 over n plus 1, which is whole thing square over gamma of 2 over n plus 1. So that's why if we want to use this factorial representation, then this whole thing that we just have. This is going to be the same thing as now then 4 times okay, 1 over n factorial square divided this by now 2 over n factorial. So you can use this as an expression. Okay, now using this expression for the area, let's talk about those four cases represented on your question. First, when your n is going to 0, then we can talk about the limit. Your n is going to 0, the whole thing, 4 over n times gamma of 1 over n plus 1 
times gamma of 1 over n. That divided by gamma of 1, 2 over n plus 1. Okay, this one we can make a little conversion. Let's say m is now 1 over n. And then what you will be having is the limit. m is then going to be infinity. Then we have now then 4m times gamma of now m plus 1 times gamma of m over gamma of now 2m plus 1. Okay, so that's why we can represent this as now. This is the same thing as the limit. m is going to infinity. Then we have 4m. That times now m factorial times m minus 1 factorial over now 2m factorial. Okay, so that's why this has to be the same thing as now then limit m is going to infinity, then we have 4 times okay, m factorial times another m factorial divided by 2m factorial. We can easily use this Stirling's formula to see how this is equal to 0. So first case, when your n is going to 0, then this limit is now equal to 0, which is the area is equal to 0. Now let's talk about when your n is equal to 1. So second case, your n is equal to now 1. Okay, then the area has to be 4 times now gamma of 2 times gamma 1 over gamma of 2 plus 1. That is equal to 3. Okay, this one is easy. So this one has to be equal to 4 times 1 times 1 over now 2. That is equal to now 2. So this is the situation that your area has to be like 4 isosceles right triangles with a base of 1. This kind of situation. And this has to be just the area. Now we can move on to n is equal to 2. So third case, when your n is equal to 2. Okay, so when n is equal to 2, still we'll be using this representation for the area, right? But let me rewrite this. For the area, that is now 4 times gamma of 1 over 2 plus 1 times gamma of 1 over 2. That over gamma of now only this 2. Okay, then this has to be the same thing as now 4 um, over 2 times 1 over 2 gamma of 1 over 2 times gamma of 1 over 2 over just the 1. So that's why we can cancel all these things out. Then you will be ending up with gamma of 1 over 2 now square. This is equal to pi, which is the unit circle. Okay, then case number 4 is when your n is going to infinity. Then we already know your gamma of 1 plus 1 over n. This is equal to 1 over n times gamma of 1 over n. So that's why your gamma of 1 over n is equal to n times gamma of 1 plus 1 over n. Using this, we can rewrite this representation of the area as 4 over n times gamma of 1 plus 1 over n times gamma of 1 over n is equal to this, which is n times gamma of 1 plus 1 over n. Now over gamma of 2 over n plus 1. So we can cancel this out. And then it will end up with just the 4, which is about 4 unit circles. Okay, so pretty interesting question about the beta function. So I'll be back with more videos with more questions like this sometime soon.